video I talked to you about just the basics of what von Mises stress is. In this video, I'd like to work through an example for you with some numbers. Now, before we start doing uh, some calculations, let's lay out the, the strategy here. Let's write the recipe out. Well, first thing we'll need to do is have a stress element that has the stress, normal stress in the x direction, normal stress in the y direction, and shear stress in. From there, we'll draw more circle. Got that done. Next thing we'll do is we'll calculate the principal stresses. All right? And we'll call those, those will just be sigma 1 and sigma 2. And then 4, we'll find sigma v. That's a very bad 2, isn't it? There we go. Sigma 1 and sigma 2. And then sigma v is going to be the von Mises stress. And if the von Mises stress is less than our allowable stress, we're okay. If it's more than our allowable stress, we're predicting ductile failure. So let's get started here. We've seen, hopefully, uh, stress elements before. This is related to a problem I found in Beer and Johnson. I modified it a little bit just to keep things interesting. Let's see. This is 80 megapascals there in the x direction, the same in the y direction, minus 40 here. Okay, so that's in compression there. I'll just, that's, so that's sigma x, sigma y, and then the shear, I'll put positive, and that'll be 25 megapascals. So sigma x is 80, sigma y is minus 40, and tau xy is positive 25 megapascals. Okay, so there we go. That's enough information to draw more circle, okay? And so we're going to see, make sure I stay in frame here, right about there. Um, I'm going to erase this here in a second. We're going to draw more circle using the sigma tau axes like we always do. Okay, so let's see. Let's put the tau axis there and the sigma axis there. So there's sigma and that's tau. Okay, first thing we do is plot the x face location. So the x face location goes right there. And I'll call that 40, and that 80, and that minus 40. Okay, so there's minus 40, 0, 40, and 80. Those will be my marks. And I'll make that 40 and that 40. That's pretty close. That'll get us the right answer here. So plus 80 megapascals right there, and plus 25. Well, if that's 40, 25 must be right about there. So that's the x face, right? 80 plus 25. Now, tau yx is negative tau xy, so that's going to be easy. And we'll, the other, one, the other uh, point we'll plot here is minus 40 megapascals on the y face and minus 25 uh, megapascals shear on the y face. We'll go over to minus 40 and go down about that same amount here. Okay, so that's on the y face. All right, so we've got two points, and those two, I've got to draw a line between those two points. And those, that line is the diameter of a circle. And that point right there where we cross is sigma bar. Actually, that's a bad place to write that. Sigma bar is sigma x plus sigma y over 2. So that's 80 minus 40 divided by 2. So that's going to be 20 megapascals. And that looks about right. I got that at about 20, you know, at least to the scale I'm using here anyway. And of course, I'm going to draw more circle here, which is, this is sort of Moore's, oh, that's kind of Moore's ellipse. That's not a very good circle, is it? Well, anyway, um, I've got this radius here. Well, radius is easy to figure out. And let's see, let's put that, uh, can I put this down here? Uh, okay, I'm running out of room here. Radius is going to be that distance right there squared plus that distance right there squared. Add them together and take the square root. Just. Uh, Pythagorean theorem, so it's going to be 25 squared plus 80 minus 20 squared, and that should come out to be, if I did this right, 65 megapascals, okay, and that distance right there, that angle, is 2 feet, right, now the angle is really important here, the angle, if I, if I took my element and I rotated it that way by feet, I would, the faces of that, uh, stress element would see sigma 1 and sigma 2. 
So two phi is, uh, let's see, actually phi is 11.3 degrees. Make sure I get that right. It's 11.3 degrees, all right? Now, I still need to know sigma 1 and sigma 2. Well, sigma 1 is going to be sigma bar plus the radius. So let's see, let's write this out here. Done that, done that. Sigma 1 equals sigma bar plus r. And that's going to turn out to be, oh, let's see, 85 megapascals. I could have figured that out without looking, huh? And sigma 2 is going to be sigma bar minus r. And that works out to minus 45 megapascals. Okay, so I've got all the uh, intermediate information I need here. In fact, let's just write this over here. Sigma 1 is 85 megapascals and sigma 2 is minus 45 megapascals. Alright, all I need to do now is find the more the uh, more stress, the von Mises stress, and compare that to my yield stress. Well, I didn't, I didn't really lay out a yield stress here. Let's assume for right now that sigma yield is 125 megapascals. Now that's awfully low, but let's say we don't have very good material and we're trying to be very conservative there. Maybe that has a uh, safety factor built into it. Okay, so let's erase all this stuff here. All I need to do now, I've done steps one, two, three, done that, and so four, find sigma v. Well, how do you figure out sigma v? For plain stress like we've got here, the expression for von Mises stress is sigma 1 squared, and make sure I do this right here, uh, let's see there I put it, plus sigma 2 squared minus sigma 1 sigma 2. Alright? Now, why doesn't shear appear in there anywhere? Well, think about it. If I take here, let me pull my, my little stress element here. If I take my stress element here, it originally saw stresses in the x and the y and the tau xy. Okay? If I rotate this 11.3 degrees in that direction, I've now got it set so this is pointing the direction that would correspond to the sigma axis on my Mohr circle. Just to draw that little tiny Mohr circle up here, okay? There's pretty much the Mohr circle I had. That's really tiny, isn't it? If, if I'm pointing that direction, if my faces are lined up so that's uh, in the x face and that's the y face, what's tau? It's zero. If I have this line 11.3 degrees off axis, there is no shear. That's what Mohr's circle said. All right? So I don't have to worry about it. That's why it doesn't appear in here. Okay, so let's see. I had that as... 85 squared plus, now I can say plus here because it's a negative number, but I'm going to square it. How about this? Minus 45 squared. Is that, that's probably a little, a little better. Plus 85 times 45, and that's all going to be in megapascals. And when I work that out, carry that calculation out, I get, let's see, what did I get here? I got 114.3 megapascals. That's the von Mises stress now. Is the von Mises stress lower than my assumed yield stress? Yes, it is. Okay. Is this higher than my principal stress? Yes, it is. If I had used only principal stresses as the failure criteria, that is, as long as I'm below the principal stress, ab ab above the above, or sorry, below sigma one and above sigma two, I'm good. Well. That would, be very, that would tell me that I have a safety factor of one and a half or so. This tells me my safety factor is one point something, but it's not very much, 1.1. This tells me I'm much closer to yield than that criteria would have told me. All right? So von Mises stress is a more sophisticated way of predicting yield stress or predicting ductile failure. It takes into account mechanisms that just looking at simple principal stresses doesn't take into account. Now the mathematics of it is a little complicated and I can't tell you about it in what, nine and a half minutes here, okay? So, but this is how to calculate it. Last video we learned the basics, we learned the recipe here. This video, we started with a stress element, went through the numbers, went through our recipe, now we calculated von Mises stress, and in this case, 
just made it. According to this, I'm okay. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.